Just like you heard, my name is Jakub Sandlewski, and I'm a part of the development team responsible for the Group Play SDK. And today, I'd like to share some knowledge in this topic with you. So, my presentation will be divided into far, five parts, as I'm sure that you're tired, guys, and actually, you can sleep through the part that does not interest you. Uh, so, at the beginning, I'd like to give a little overview about the Group Play SDK to those that has not yet heard anything about it. Then I will move to the SDK topic. So what you can, so what you can expect is, actual, is actually um, feature overviews, some talk about the architecture and API, uh, and then the cherry at the top, the Unity 3D game engine plugin that we've developed. Uh, and at the end, I'd like to rise a temperature a little uh, with reviewing our future plans for the Group Play SDK. So let's hang on and get going. Uh, yeah. So the first thing that you should know before starting to develop with our Group Play SDK is that the Group Play service is not a single module. It consists of application and actually an SDK that utilizes the features of the former one. So what really is that application? What's its features? Basically, the Crouplay application is an advanced real-time sharing service that allows to share the media content like videos, pictures, documents, and all of this in a real time. But actually, that's not all. The sharing service is, ex is extended to the point when the users connected to the same group can share their games and applications. Along with a dynamic presence updates of the connected users, we are presented with um, something like a lobby, well, a lobby-like features, yes? Let's move to the topic that probably inter interests you the most, so the SDK. So the main feature of this SDK is uh, the, uh, available, it, it is available to create the uh, network between the multiple devices. Actually, uh, it is a mobile access point. How does it work? Actually. It is a simple and fast way to connect multiple devices, yes? So uh, the Group Play SDK provides the group features. And what is a group? Actually, it uses the code SDK and a channel feature of the call SDK. It provides the create and join group. So the users with a single click on the create group creates a channel that they can interact with and connect. What else the group can do? It tracks the user status, like a number of participants, like the session availability, and, well, things like that, yes. So, uh, like I said at the beginning, the SDK features, uh, well, utilizes the features of the group play application. So what's left is an application hub. Here you can see how you can regis register your application within the currently available applications. It's a little different from the one that I've mentioned before because here the list, the list is of those that applications that are installed on your device. So as you can see, it's a really simple way. All you have to do is to add a single line to your Android manifest file. You create a new metadata with the name group play and the value set to true and you can enjoy your application visible in our application hub. I've told before about the court SDK. Actually, I could have skipped this slide because the whole court implementation is hidden from the developers and the users. So you don't have to care about setting up the connection or uh, tinkering uh, with the code of the court SDK. But still, it's good to know what lies under the hood, isn't it? 
So what the code is, is responsible for? It's responsible for the interaction between the devices. Well, <laughs> it's obvious, isn't it? Well, a synchronized content sharing, broadcast of messages between the devices, also a data transfer between the devices, and utilization of the group play Wi-Fi network. I won't get into the details as you can get those from our documentation and developer guide uh, available on the developer.samsung.com site. Uh, so you can just look there. But let's take a look at the communication um, at the communication diagram from somewhat, somewhat a higher level. Here you can see that the Grouply application sets up Wi-Fi network, uh, creating the mobile access point with the guest device. Then your application that features the Grouply SDK, uh, well, with the usage of Grouply SDK, connects with the Grouply application, well, interacts, it, it is a better word, interacts with the Grouply application and with the usage of cord, it communicates with the guest device. Pretty simple. Actually, you are not uh, ob obliged to use the cord for your in-app communication. You can use any protocol that you want, regardless uh, the fact that the group play utilizes the cord SDK for its features, yeah? So you can use any communication protocol that you want. You can create your own or use an already existing SDK. Let's look at some code related stuff. Here you have an overview of our API. It's really simple. There are two classes, one interface and, and, met and eight methods. Could it be simpler? Uh, I don't believe so. So to keep it brief, I will only talk about the most important ones. You can check uh, the whole documentation, uh, you can check documentation for the whole overview. So, let's take a look at the initialize method from the SGP class. What does it do? Actually, it checks if our device supports the group the SDK. If not, of course, it will throw the, an exception. Then, we have a uh, start method from the SGP group play. Uh, this method actually warms up the court SDK, which cre it creates the channel and actually initializes some data that the group play SDK requires to work. Then two most important methods, the run group play method, which actually sends an intent to launch the create and join screen of the group play applications. So we can use it um, to allow user to create or to join group. And set participant info. This method actually sends an information about the user con that is connected the information to the um, group to the third party application. Uh, well, no, uh, it's not like that, sorry. Actually, it sends it to the group play application. It sends the data about the third party application and the user to the group play application. Sorry for my mistake. Uh, I briefly uh, described the uh, interface also as uh, the unconnected method is uh, invoked while everything is initialized and connected successfully. Um, I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it? So let's look at the code sample. What we have here is a class app that extends the application. Actually, uh, I know that this is not a pretty code, but actually it's only for the presentation purpose. Uh, so uh, we, what we are doing here is overriding the onCreate method. Then what we have to do, firstly, is to check if the SDK is supported by our device. To do this, we call the initialize method, passing it the application context. If this SDK is not supported, then the exception will be thrown. Uh, but please, don't handle the exceptions like here. Uh, it's really the, a bad practice. Uh, what we have now? 
actually, we are creating the new SGP group play object and registering the listener that we've actually implemented. I forgot to mention it. The SGP connection uh, status listener, which will listen for the callbacks, uh, for the network callbacks. And we are calling the start method, also passing the uh, application context. Here we have also the exception, but it's a common one, so I don't have to describe it, I believe. So now we are waiting uh, for the uh, unconnected method to be invoked by the group play SDK. Uh, if the user uh, is connected, it will be invoked, and now we are checking if the session is available. It's also part of the SDK uh, API. Uh, you can read the documentation for the details. And what we are doing here inside, uh, inside this if block is we are setting, we are telling the group play application guest device that the user is currently connected to the group. Also, passing there the information about your third party application so uh, the users can easily set up a multiplayer game. And the thing that I believe, uh, well, that I like the most is the fact that we've developed a Unity 3D game engine plugin which allows the developers of the, of the 3D games to use the group play uh, inside their software. Well, what we want to achieve with a uh, Unity 3D plugin, actually, we want, to we want it to be so, as simple as the Android side of the SDK. So we want it to have the clear and easy use of the API. Also, uh, it will be compatible with Android platform for the time being. Well, that is obvious, I think, since it it's uses the Android device. Uh, we want it to be also available on all Unity 3D versions uh, starting from the 3.6. Also, let's take a look at the API. It is similar to this, to the one uh, from the SDK. Um, the only difference here is a cleanup method, which you should really uh, read about in the documentation, which is also available on our site, um, since we have to take care of the memory in our C-sharp code. Um, well, I skip this part as I'd like to talk about our future plans. Uh, also, the Unity 3D game engine plugin, since it's a new feature right now, and there's still uh, development ongoing. Uh, so actually, most of the features of the Unity 3D game plugin are our future plans. So, I begin with the whole group play service. We are planning, we are planning to uh, create a voice over IP uh, functionality. It should be available in a few months, actually. The development is ongoing right now. Uh, we plan to add in an easy invitation feature through the shared messages like SMS. Also, an easy connection set setup. So, we want to make it even easier than it is before. And, of course, as you've heard before, since we are using the access point, the connection is only local between the devices. So what we want to do is to extend it to the global network connection so we can use the voice over IP features and all the features that I've mentioned before about the SDK and group play application through the global network. Also, we want to reach out our hand to the game developers like with the Unity 3D game plugin, game engine plugin, uh, by adding some user and room management system and actually direct data transfer. So you will have a built-in transfer protocol, um, so you won't have to use some third-party protocols or your own. Of course, it will be um, optional. And the Unity 3D game plugin. What we want to do is uh, are the regular updates. We want to update it constantly so it is as much optimized as it can be. And we want to utilize as much features that Unity 3D game engine gives 
uh, also as, as it is possible. So there will be some easy to use uh, GUI. Uh, what else? Actually, right now, you may find the Unity 3D game plugin a little heavy on the performance, but uh, we want to highly optimize it so it runs just like the Android side of the SDK. Well, for today, that's all from me. Thank you very much for listening, and, well, goodbye. Mm -hmm.